From ABC News, this is Good Morning America with Diane Sawyer and Robin Roberts. Now returning to your health, tens of millions of us have are what are called silver, silver fillings, but as we said, in fact, there is mercury in them. And the question this morning is, are they dangerous or not? We have heard so many conflicting messages over the past couple of years. And now there is a new study. It is the FBA, FDA declining to answer, but adding to the confusion and the concern out there by saying the whole issue does need more research. Like millions of Americans, Lori Grossman has cavities. I certainly had my share of silver fillings in my mouth. Silver or amalgam fillings are not really silver. They're made from a mixture of metals, including 50% mercury. In large doses, mercury has been proven to cause learning disabilities in children, brain damage in adults. So just to be safe, Lori had her fillings removed and replaced. If mercury isn't good for kids in vaccinations, well, it certainly is not good just sitting in my mouth. Does she have good reason to worry? An FDA panel met last week to review safety concerns of these fillings. And while the panel did not say they were unsafe, for the first time ever, they did recommend further study, especially in children and pregnant women. U.S. consumer groups who've been lobbying for a partial ban on the fillings feel this is the beginning. About tens of millions of Americans are still getting these fillings every year. Previous research has shown that even among people with multiple fillings, though, exposure levels can be well below those known to be harmful. There's a misguided fear out there. In order to have even the, the earliest signs of a problematic effect, a person would have to have 500 silver amalgam fillings in their mouth all at the same time. So why is it, in some countries, dentists have already banned them for use in pregnant women? So many questions, and we asked dentist Dr. Greg Latucci to come in and be our guide. Good to see you, Dr. Nice Latucci. You. First of all, it seems like an obvious question, but how do we know we have one of these? Is it just the color in your mouth? Uh, you could just open. I could count them for you. Or I you have could, a lot. Uh, <laughs> Take my word for it. When you brush your teeth in the morning, you just look in the mirror, uh -huh. and these fillings turn black over time, so they're very dark, and you can actually count how many you have. All right. We just heard that you have to have about 500 according to that expert, to reach toxic levels. They've been around for more than 100 years. Should we care? You know, that's true, but this is the problem that I have with it. When they test the blood levels and the urine levels on patients who have silver fillings, there are elevated levels of mercury in the blood and the urine. And as we chew, there are mercury vapors that are released from the fillings, which we breathe in, which get into our bloodstream. And in Europe, there's a lot of countries which are recommending that dentists do not place these in pregnant women and in children. Well, that's a concern to me because there's a lot of questions that aren't answered. So you say it's one thing to say you have to have that many for toxic levels, but what about what is happening at the lower levels? And on average, we have seven to eight fillings. We have about of us. seven fillings in the mouth, and that would, would, would equate to about one microgram of mercury being released. But let me ask you this then why are a third of American patients getting these fillings still from their dentists? Why are dentists doing it? Dentists are still doing it because there has been no scientific proof linking the silver fillings to any of these diseases. Okay, so that's very important. Number two, they're inexpensive, they last a long time, and they're very easy to place. So that's why dentists are still placing them. However, for me, I treat my patients as I would treat my two sons and my wife. I wouldn't put it in their mouth, a new silver filling, and I wouldn't do it in the patients either. However, I'm not saying go get your silver fillings taken out. Absolutely not. But why not? I if you wouldn't put them in, why not get them out? Because there needs to be more research on the dangers of these amalgam or mercury fillings before we do something like that. And there have been studies actually at the University of Connecticut where if silver fillings were banned, a lot of patients couldn't afford to do other fillings, therefore they wouldn't fill their cavities, which would be a deterioration of oral health. So, so you're a dilemma saying here. in taking them out, it's very expensive and insurance doesn't pay for it anyway. Exactly. However, if we found that they were dangerous, then insurance companies might think differently about what they do cover. And uh, again, in the, on the whole question of having them removed, w would you have them replaced with what if you did? What I tell my pa patients are, you don't have to go and take all your silver fillings out. However, as one particular one breaks down or you get decay there, you take it out and you don't replace it with a new silver filling. You can replace it with composite, which is plastic, with porcelain, Doesn't, which lasts long. Not as, not, not as durable, I, The porcelain, I think, is as durable. The composite might not be, mm -hmm. but if I had a choice between putting a new mercury filling, which is 50% mercury in my mouth, versus a composite filling that I might have to replace in a few years, mm -hmm. I would choose the composite. So you're saying... 
no to pregnant women and children. Absolutely You're saying not. You will not do it as a new filling, but right now you would not recommend to your family to have the ones they have taken out. Right. Different people have different sensitivities to things. You have people who smoke and they get cancer and other people don't. Do I know your sensitivity or my sensitivity to mercury? We don't know that. All right. Well, check online for more information. Thanks, okay. Dr. Thank Dr. you Tisha. very much. We'll be back.